Assalamu alaikum. My name is Iman Khan. Um, I am the same person that has always put up these videos, but I am redoing them in the cup. So anyways, today um, I'm going to be doing a short reading from the, one of the books that my husband gave me called The Fragile Vessels. And I'm going to read, um, I'm going to start with chapter two. And uh, it's uh, very exciting. It's called The Husband's Obligations Towards His Wife. So, naturally, I'd pick that one. Anyways, so I'm going to go right into it. The Woman's Rights Cultures Prior to Islam In the ancient nations and societies that deviated from the pure revelation, the woman was considered a tradable commodity. She was believed to be a filthy being from the making of Satan, Satan or Shaitan. The notion of the woman was largely present even in Jewish and Christian texts and scriptures. Similarly, the woman's position was extremely bad during, excuse me if I mispronounce, Jahiliyah. Jahilia. She was considered part of her father's or husband's property. Thus, she was transferred by inheritance like other parts of the estate. The Arabs regarded the birth of a baby girl a bad omen and would often get rid of her by burying her alive. The woman's status and rights are only established in Allah's fair guidance which was brought by his messengers through the ages. After the alteration or obliteration of all of the previous messages, Islam came to crown all of these messages with the most perfect guidance from Allah, leaving no detail untouched and reestablishing the right position for the woman. She is not a lesser being than the man may hum humiliate and oppress at convenience. Rather, she is his counterpart. Aisha, Anas, and Um Suleiman reported that Allah's messenger said, Indeed, the women are only the full sisters of men. The woman's rights in Islam. The woman's rights are ordained by Allah, and no one may violate them for any reason. al Mikdam reported that Allah's messenger said, Indeed, Allah commands you to be good to the women, Indeed, they are your mothers, daughters, and material, maternal aunts. Indeed, a man from the people of the book would be married to a woman who can hardly know how to pull a string, and yet none of them would want to depart from his companion. The woman's lesser physical strength is not by any means a justification for the man to overstep her rights. Abu Huraira reported that Allah's messenger said, I strongly abonish you in regard to the right of the two weak ones, the orphans and the woman. The women's rights in Islam. The wife's rights on her husband are clearly ordained and strongly established in Islam. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, gave the following instruction to a number of his companions, including Uthman bin Mazun and Abdullah bin Amir. Your wife has a right upon you, Amir bin al Ahwas reported that Allah's messenger said, Lo, you have rights on your women and your women have rights on you. Fulfilling the wife's rights is an indication of taqwa, revering Allah and fearing his punishment. It is a trust between a man and his Lord, and he will question him about the trust. Jabir reported that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, Have taqwa of Allah in regard to your women. Indeed, you took them in marriage through a trust with Allah and had access to their private parts by Allah's word, permission. They have a right on you that you provide them with food and clothing in a fitting manner. The woman has rights and obligations. Her rights must be fulfilled in a serious and fair manner. This is an important requirement in Islam. Neglecting it constitutes a clear act of disobedience and threatens the well-being of the family and the Muslim society. With this introduction, we go on to discuss some of the rights that are specifically related to the women in Islam. Protection. An important obligation upon the husband. Security and safety are most important for a human being. One's needs to feel, to feel reasonably secure in order to function normally and perform one's regular tasks. The wife is usually the weaker of the two spouses and looks to her husband for protection. 
thus one of the husband's most important obligation is providing protection for his wife this is part of his responsibility as the leader of the family men are in charge of women by right of what qualities allah has given one over the other and what they spend in support from their wealth this ayah shows that allah gave leadership or kawama to the man because of certain qualities that would normally enable him to conduct to conduct such a responsibility the most important quality of a leader is his ability to protect his followers and provide for them an atmosphere of security and harmony. Protection is a general term that covers physical, emotional, and other forms of well-being. The husband must strive to protect his wife in all of those respects. Some details in this regard will be discussed in the subsequent sections. Gaira, Gaira, Gaira. Again, uh, excuse me for any mispronunciations. As a demonstration of man's love towards his wife, he should have gaira for her. Gaira is the great concern about her well-being and the zeal to protect her from anything that might harm her person, such as an evil touch, word, or look. But gaira should not reach the point of distrusting and suspecting her without reason nor should it be for the purpose of finding possible mistakes. Jabir bin Latik reported that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, there is a form of gaira that Allah loves, and a form that Allah hates. Gaira that Allah loves is that which is based on valid suspicion, and gaira that Allah hates is that which is without valid suspicion. A person without gaira is called deyuf, the youth is a person who has no sense of protection or honor regarding his wife. As we discussed in the second book of this series, the du the du youth will not enter Jannah, avoiding unnecessary suspicion. As indicated in the above subsection, one should not nurture unjustifiable doubts about his wife, nor should he dig for mistakes for which he would then blame her. For this reason, the prophet, peace be upon him, prohibited a man from coming unexpectedly to his home. Jabir reported that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, When one of you is back from a long journey, he should not suddenly come to his family by night. Similarly, Anas reported, Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, never came to his families after a journey by night. He would either come to them during the morning or the afternoon safeguarding her secrets. It is greatly prohibited for a man to expose his wife's secrets, especially in matters of privacy that no person would normally know except the husband, such as birthmarks, reaction to some intimate acts, and so on. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri reported that Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, among the people who will have the most grievous position before Allah on the day of resurrection is the man who, after he privately approaches his wife and she privately approaches him, he exposes her secrets. Exposing the wife's secrets brings mistrust and fear into her heart and could be an indication of a man's inclination toward being a dayuth. Financial support. Part of the kawama obligations. One of the husband's major responsibility towards his wife and family is providing financial support. This responsibility is one of the important reasons for which Allah appointed the man as the head of the family. Men are in charge of women by right of what qualities Allah has given over one over the other and what they spend in support from their wealth. In Jabir's hadith that we cited earlier, Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, they, your women, have a right on you, that you provide them with food and clothing in a fitting manner, according to his capability. The financial support required from the husband is in accordance with his financial capability, Allah says. Allah does not burden a person beyond his capacity. A husband is not required to give more than what he has, or more, or nor is he allowed to provide inadequate support when he can afford giving more. Allah says in regard to women who get divorced before being touched. 
Give them the divorce compensation. The wealthy